Hello, my name is Sebastian and I'm going to show you how to set up the axis design characters for Cinema 4D. So the first thing you want to do is of course load a um, character uh, from the axis library. Then you'll see that each character comes with an um, extra file which references the lights and the studio environment. Uh, so you can just deactivate that if you want to work just on the character. And then you'll see there's the joint hierarchy. So they all share the same joint hierarchy with uh, just a specific name for each character. Uh, and then the, the meshes and all. So just switch to the timeline, then go to the motion mode and right click to load the motion source. From the motion source, uh, just select whatever motion you want. So you have motions that fit female characters and motion that fit uh, male characters. Uh, so I'm just going to take uh, uh, something where she walks. Um, let's just take that for now. All right, so once it is loaded, just drag it and drop it onto the layer here, which is a motion layer. And if you play the timeline, you see it's actually playing uh, the motion. You need to adjust your timeline to fit the length of the motion that you just imported. So you see here it's 945. And so that way you can cover the whole motion. You will notice that here our feet look kind of weird. This is because the motion data, when it's been captured, uh, has been captured without um, a character without heels. So you'll need to adjust that uh, on the characters that have heels. So to do this, it's very easy. Just select the motion um, system tag and add a, a layer, an animation layer. Here, you drop it on top of it so because you want it uh, to be uh, red first. Then you unfold uh, the yaki, and let's just take the, uh, the foot here and switch to the coordinates tab, go back to frame zero and we're going to adjust, so I think usually it's like 20 degrees, okay, so I just added 20 degrees to the rotation and then record a keyframe. Um, do the same thing on the other foot. 20. All right. And you see that it adjusted the position of the feet and it will still retain the initial mo motion data basically. Okay. If you want you can hide the ghosting of the motion clip which is kind of the blue light blue wireframe there. It gives you a, um, an idea of a uh, the motion, basically the starting and end pose. And you see it that way you can correct uh, basically the pose. You can also apply that to anything else. So for example, let's say here I see the head is kind of uh, tilted upward. Let's say I wanted um, tilted on the left or something at all times. Uh, so I'll just select the head. Remember I'm still on my layer one here. If I switch to motion system, you see uh, layer one is active. So that's the, the layer I'm animating on. And I'm just going to uh, switch, uh, so probably not that. All right, here a little bit on the left. I mean, right for her. And probably a little bit down. And if I do that, you see that she maintains that head orientation. And of course, I can animate that if I want to. Uh, so this was left and right, so I just record a new key and let's say I want her to turn her head here at that point. And you see that she still does that and still retains the initial motion data as well. If you want you can also uh, mix motions. So just load another uh, motion clip. Uh, let's say I want her to be on the wall there. So the first thing I need to do is actually split here. Uh, I'm gonna cut my motion source here. Just get rid of that. And I'm going to um, drag that one on the timeline and make them overlap. 
And you'll see when I, I make them overlap, I have that uh, spline motion as well, which is the blending between the two, um, two uh, motion capture data, basically. All right, and you see when I do that, so it blends between the two motion, but you see that she shifts uh, here. So to do this, uh, I will need to actually add a pivot. So I select the motion clip, so this motion clip there, switch to the advanced tab and create a pivot. And basically what it does, it allows me to actually nudge the motion um, capture where it needs to be. So here I see I need to drag it a little bit down and it's easier if I keep actually ghosting all right so that way I have both ghosts I'll make that ghost the color a little bit more obvious all right so I'm trying to do um, trying to adjust the green ghost on top of the blue ghost basically so it, it, she doesn't shift as much So I'll probably drag it somewhere around here. And you can just adjust like that. And of course you can trim your motion so that the proper foot moves at the proper time and so on. But that's it. That's mainly how to use and apply motion capture data basically and correct the poses and, and things like that. Uh, let me just hide the ghosts. like this. You can also rescale your characters if you want to. So just select the null object, switch to the object mode, and then you can rescale the characters and it retains all motion data as well properly. Um, so basically here what is recorded, so we have a reference object which is just a null object set to the world coordinate and that one uh, just have a single key to, to reference its position. Uh, then the hips have um, position and rotation and the rest of the joints have just rotation. So that's why it should be, uh, it should be able to adjust um, the, the scale of the character. Another thing that you want to do, so you'll see some of these characters, uh, if I switch to this one for example, some of these characters are quite short compared to the uh, motion capture. So you'll need to uh, adjust the position of the character when it happens. So you see here, for example, uh, let me disable that. You see here in kind of yellowish, that's the initial motion capture and that's the scale of the character. You see that it's uh, a lot bigger. That character is a lot bigger than the character I'm, I'm trying to apply it to. So you'll need to adjust your character position for that. So you can either create a, uh, a pivot or move the, the character itself here. Uh, it's better usually to, to create a pivot because when you start blending motion then you want them um, to blend properly. So just create a pivot and lower your character to the floor uh, and that's it, the rest should just play uh, regularly. All right, that's it. Thank you.